Welcome back to BT. My name is Sitzik Saro. A warning to everyone that this segment may be triggering. Today is International Holocaust Remembrance Day, a day of commemoration. But a new study has found that many young people believe that the Holocaust was exaggerated or fabricated. But that's it for a second. We are joined now by Marilyn Sinclair, founder of Liberation 75, the charity that commissioned this study, and Nate Leipziger, a Holocaust survivor who was in Auschwitz. Uh, Marilyn, it's great to see you, and, and Nate, sir, it's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you for being here today. What you said. Um, Marilyn, I want to start with you here because I, look, we get, we have an amazing team here of researchers at BT, and they send some, some very good information every day. When I was going through the numbers you have on what is and is not being taught about the Holocaust in schools across North America, I was stunned. I was absolutely stunned. Please walk us through it. So, Sid, I, I guess you just set up the context for it. There is no Holocaust education that's mandatory within any curriculum of any province or territory in Canada. So when we did this study of students, grades 6 to 12, and we had 3,600 students in our study from across the country, from all demographics and backgrounds and religions um, and genders, we found that one-third were either unsure or felt that the Holocaust had been exaggerated or fabricated. They just don't know about the Holocaust, which makes sense because they're not being taught about it in their schools. So when we asked them, where are you learning about the Holocaust from? 40% said social media. And we know how dangerous that is because of social media's uh, is so filled with misinformation and disinformation and fake news. Mr. Leipziger, let's 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 jump off that and and tell people the truth. Uh, again, you were at Auschwitz uh, with your parents and your sister. Uh, the word Auschwitz, uh, the word Auschwitz speaks for itself. Most people know what that means. But to go with some of the numbers we heard, maybe we we need to hear your story over and over again. So please tell us what happened to your family. Yes, well, we were sent to Auschwitz in 1943, and uh, on arrival in uh, Auschwitz, we were separated from each other, and that's the last time we were as a family. So the railroad card was the last place where we were together, the four of us, my mother and my sister, and on arrival, we were separated. My mother, unfortunately, and my sister were murdered in uh, the gas chambers of Auschwitz together with uh, a million of other uh, Jewish people that were murdered in Auschwitz. And uh, fortunately, my, myself and uh, I survived. Uh, and uh, there's a telephone comes through. I can't shut it off. Take your time, sir. Take your time. OK. It's still keep on going, but I don't no, know we, that is. Honestly, you. Uh, Mr. Leipziger, take all the time you need because we, we need to hear your story. Absolutely. Okay. As you were saying. So, at any rate, then that's, uh, that was, that's the sad part about it. And uh, we've lost uh, six million people of our, of our nation and our people. And for no reason, they were completely innocent of anything that uh, could, we could be accused of, other than the fact. Our crime was that we were born Jewish, to a Jewish mother, a Jewish father, and that was our crime, punishable by death. Um, Nate, when you hear the numbers that Marilyn threw out there about how few kids are really learning about this in a real way, how does that make you feel? Well, first of all, it's not surprising. The statistics are not surprising. Uh, it just proves that voluntary education does not reach those who really need it. See, the Holocaust, educa Holocaust uh, uh, education is not only about the terrible and atrocities that happened uh, to the six million innocent people, but it is about the gradual process of how vicious lies, falsehood, misinformation played on ignorant and unsuspecting populace. And that's why Holocaust education must start in the public school to make sure that the information that our students and our nation is getting is factual and not uh, biased and not uh, prejudiced and not a propaganda. Holocaust survivors 
are at the end of the our, of our life. We are at the end of our life, and our stories uh, happen. What's happened to us? Uh, it was uh, happened to millions of unsuspecting victims, and it is a warning to this generation, to the next generation, what will happen if you do not stop the vicious cycle of hatred, xenophobia, racism, anti-Semitism, which disrupts our peace and our way of life. You see, our country is a country of minorities. We are all entitled to live in peace and tranquility, and it is our right, our right by constitution, to be protected by our government and to have the choice where our children are attending, what school they're attending, and where, what facility we worship in. The government is responsible for that. And our life must not be harassed or endangered by people of ill will. You know, in the year 2018, the 30th anniversary of the March of the Living, our prime minister, the Right Honorable Justin Trudeau said, and I quote, the Holocaust survivors' stories remind us of our shared responsibility to never let such hatred take root in our homes, our schools, and our community. And he went on to say, Holocaust education is our most important tool in the fight against ignorance, hatred, racism, xenophobia, and yes, anti-Semitism, before it takes root in our schools, our community, and our nation. Now it's, now it's time for the government to put their money where their mouth is and make Holocaust education compulsory in public schools. Sir, I, I agree 100% with every aspect of that. Um, I'm, stu I'm stunned to learn the numbers, Marilyn, that you have here. I, 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 there's no other way for me to describe it. I couldn't believe it. Um, the only way forward here is to try and fix it. And, and, and Nate, you were, you were eloquent in how we get there. Uh, again, today is International Holocaust Remembrance Day. Marilyn St. Clair is the founder of Liberation 75. Uh, check out the site online, please, if you'd like more information. And uh, Nate Leipziger is an Auschwitz survivor. Obviously, not everyone in his family made it. Uh, we, are, we are beyond privileged, sir, that you could be on today. Uh, we need more time with you. We will, we will try and book that. And uh, we, we look forward to talking to both of you again. Take care. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you very much. Thank you. More BT after this.